I'd say this one's near the top. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. This time we're looking at the March Humble Choice Bundle, and I will admit that it has gotten a lot of flack from what I'm seeing as far as the responses go, uh, but they really went with the like RPG survival crafting kind of stuff, and uh, I found it pleasing. So let's look at the games that are in the bundle. We've got my friend Pedro, Planet Coaster with one DLC, F1 2019 Anniversary Edition, Fell Seal, Arbiter's Mark, Battle Chasers Night War, Exapunks, Turok, Death's Gambit, 1980X, Niflheim, AI War 2, and Etherborn. I do currently have Planet Coaster and AI War 2 in my library. I'm definitely excited to snag this bundle, so without any further ado, let's jump into it and take a look at the actual games. My friend Pedro. Basically, it's like John Wick meets Deadpool, and also a banana is your best friend. <laughs> The story is actually pretty good. The game itself is extremely short, it clocks in at about 3 hours. That's sort of a theme for this bundle, a lot of these games are super short. Uh, and unfortunately the game also seems to blow its load in like the first half of the game. It goes from like this action packed shooting madness to just a humdrum sort of platformer in the last half. Which is disappointing. The levels that do allow you to actually run and gun feel extremely good but I'm quite unsure why they decided to tone down that aspect in the last half of the game. Planet Coaster. If you're into roller coaster simulators, then Planet Coaster might scratch that itch, but it does have its fair share of problems. For one, the amount of DLC is absolutely ludicrous as far as I'm concerned, but then again, this genre isn't exactly in my wheelhouse. Uh, the performance of the game itself is fairly middling, and the biggest gripe of all is that the parks themselves are tiny. You will not be recreating Mr. Bone's Wild Ride while playing Planet Coaster, and I think that's quite sad. Graphically, it does look very pretty, and it has freeform placement of the track, which I think is a nice addition. And on top of all that, it's decently relaxing, but I don't think that this is a game that I'd normally pick for myself, at least personally. F1 2019 if you chose Dirt Rally 2.0 in January, you'll probably be fairly excited to see F1 in here. This is of course on-track racing as compared to off-road racing, but they are both similar in a lot of ways. There's very little hand-holding, and the difficulty curve in each game is fairly steep. If you're into that sort of racing game, then you've definitely got your highlight for this bundle. Online stats and rewards for playing are a great draw for people who might not be as into the genre, but on the downside, this is a Codemasters game, so intermittent crashes do happen from time to time. Felseal Arbiter's Mark. As someone who sunk a thousand hours into Final Fantasy Tactics Advance when I was a young lad, I was very excited to see Felseal present here. Recruit your crew of characters, pick from over 20 classes, and battle it out. Some of the more awkward points do include the high mobility of the characters, which means choosing your facing to end the turn can be difficult, as you and the enemy will just kind of endlessly flank each other. Additionally, another weird design choice is that your character can totally swim and perform actions in the water, but if your character is knocked into the water by an enemy character, they die instantly, which I think is really weird. Really, those are just minor gripes, and I'm definitely excited to plug 30 plus hours into this one. Battle Chasers Night War, another turn-based RPG. Humble, you have been too kind this month. This time, it's a RPG of the JRPG variety, and I see a lot of people pointing fingers at how slow and grindy the game is, but that's kind of what JRPGs do. <laughs> Stack levels, craft and enchant your equipment, fiddle with your party composition, and while you're in combat, you can stack your meter and unleash some gorgeous attacks. I might be biased, but this game definitely appeals to me in a huge way. Exapunks, did you snag Shenzhen IO last month? Well, you're gonna do exactly with Exapunks what you did with Shenzhen. If you grab Shenzhen, grab this. If you passed on Shenzhen, pass on this. Exapunks is heavily in the same vein. This is a game that's much more accessible to the common man than most other programming games. Hacknet, Shenzhen, 
TIS-100, which I think is nice because I, I am sort of a layman when it comes to coding. Uh, packets of code are represented by robots called EGSA that will pick up and manipulate files based on your instruction slash programming. If you're an experienced programmer, you'll probably find yourself bored to tears. But this is a superb introduction to assembly language programming, and it's set up to be a game that can be deceptively fun while it teaches you. Oh, Turok. Turok, Turok, Turok. I'm probably going to take some heat for this one, but Turok is not worth playing in 2020, unless you are extremely nostalgic for the N64 days. Big empty levels, frustrating key hunting puzzles, and AI that hasn't been improved in over a decade. Granted, it's cool to gun down a Triceratops with a rocket launcher strapped to its back, but the majority of enemies are just boring soldiers or crappy aliens anyways. Some shooters from the 90s have stood the test of time. Wolfenstein and Doom leap to mind, but Turok is certainly not one of them. Really, one of the only things that has been changed for this edition of Turok is the addition of some increased resolution sizes, which is not enough to sell me on the game. I've experienced it once before, and this is going to be one of the games that I passed on. Death's Gambit from Adult Swim Games is a gorgeous 2D Souls-like action platformer the character building is a nice addition in most games, but this one still needs a fair amount of tweaking, I feel. One point in particular is the bosses. The hard mode bosses. Once you're nearing the maximum level, hard mode bosses can start to feel like trash mobs, especially the earlier ones. And then, once you finally get to the last boss, you might find yourself getting swatted down in a matter of seconds. Blasphemous came by in December of 2019, and I'll be honest with you that that is an objectively better game than this. But if you missed Blasphemous or just enjoy the genre that much, then Death's Gambit can probably fill in the gaps for you. 1980X, another meta-narrative game that I have to compare to the Hex from last month. Similar to that gem, this game covers many different styles. Shooting, driving, beat-em-up, RPG, and more. The difference here is the fantastic 80s aesthetic that permeates 1980X. Well, this game sounds amazing, Dayton. Is there any downside? I mean, yeah, of course there is. <laughs> the time to completion is only roughly an hour, and the game doesn't really warrant a replay. Still, if you're in the mood for a nostalgia trip, I would recommend this game over Turok endlessly. Niflheim, survival crafting, action beat-em-up, with a gorgeous art style. Hunt game, cook food, mine rocks, and in between all of that, you can go full viking and smash up some enemies. The game does have some grind to it, but as you might have noticed, I don't mind that too much. Balancing issues do become a problem during the latter half of the game, but if you enjoy micromanaging gear and durability, that could be a bit of a selling point for you. Personally, I do enjoy it, but you should take that with a grain of salt, because I am someone who has purchased all of the DLC for Battle Brothers. AI War 2 is a space RTS grand strategy that has no right being as fun as it is. <laughs> There's plenty of different ways to play and a huge amount of content to delve into. The best part for me is that you won't find yourself going toe to toe with most opponents. AI War 2 focuses on guerrilla tactics. I'm absolutely terrible at most RTS games because I simply can't keep up with the computer's rate of production, but AI War pits you against an already overwhelming force and allows you to build up your army from the shadows. It does feel a bit dumbed down when compared to the original AI war, but uh, as a dumb guy, that's kind of exactly what I needed. <laughs> Etherborn, an environmental puzzle platformer that offers some nice visuals and competently built puzzles. As with a lot of other games we've talked about in this bundle, the runtime of the game is just an hour or two, which I won't judge. That can be a positive or a negative. But for me personally, it doesn't please. I got plenty of free time. <laughs> Additionally, the camera feels really broken with very little ability to actually control it and remedy the problems that it has. There are some decent ideas at play here, but there are a lot of other games that do it multiplicatively better. The story is also quite pretentious. So what should you pick? I don't know, let's head back to the overview. The games that I skipped out on were Turok and AI War. There were a lot of games in this bundle that grabbed me. Like I said, I'm pretty sure Humble went through my wish list, 
and picked some of the more obscure games that they knew I'd never actually buy for myself and shoved them in this bundle. I'm extremely pleased with it. If you've got to drop two things out, I'd say it would be relatively easy. I would say drop Turok first and foremost. Nobody needs to go back there. People who don't enjoy puzzles, if you don't like Sims, then Planet Coaster can be tossed by the wayside fairly easily. If you don't like programming and logic, Exapunks isn't going to make it for you. Micromanagement haters will get rid of Niflheim probably. People who want uh, a bit more meat on their games could drop 1980X. If I didn't already own AI War 2, I would probably get rid of Aetherborn, but that's just my personal preference. Overall, I think the bundle was really, really good this month. I don't know what people are talking about when they say it fell short. Did it fall short to some of the other Humble Monthly bundles? Yes, it did. But compared to the other Humble Choice bundles that we had, I'd say this one is near the top. Like I said, my wishlist had My Friend Pedro, Fell Seal, Battle Chasers, Exapunk, Death's Gambit, 1980X, I think Niflheim was also on there. So the majority of these games were on my freaking wish list, which is absolutely amazing. Super happy to pick this up. You guys should let me know what you decided on, what are the stars of this bundle, and what should be thrown in the trash. If you've listened this far, I'd say that you are deserving. So I have an extra copy. I picked up Planet Coaster just for the DLC. So if you want the base game, let me know. I'll reach out to you and get that to you somehow. As always, I massively, massively appreciate your support with these videos. Next month, I might be a little bit late with it since we're moving houses, but one way or the other, I will find a way to get it up eventually. Thank you so much for listening with me, friends. I hope that you'll like, comment, and to subscribe. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. And as always, a big, big shout out to Nico the Legend for supporting us on Patreon currently. Once again, friends, this has been Bundle Banter, the humble choice for March 2020. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, and I shall see you in the next video, whatever that might be. Probably Temtem. <laughs> I hope you guys are keeping yourself safe out there, and I will see you then. So until then, friends, bye bye